What's up, photography fans? This is Chris Porter with you, suckerphotography.com. But not for long. Anyway, um, I'm in this group called Real World Photographers and Models, started by the lovely and talented Tal Campbell, of course. Got to give a shout-out to my boy. Anyway, um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a prism effect with lights. I've never done it before, but hey, who knows? It may come out really good. This brother right here, Chris. M. Knight said that he wanted to, he, he said he's not looking for any criticism or feedback on this photo, which her neck's not showing. That's the only criticism I got, Chris. But um, you're looking for, he wants to know, he wanted to truly add a prismatic effect coming off the stone, but didn't know how to do it. He's not a Photoshop dude. But um, luckily, I kind of am. So let's go ahead and uh, take care of this cat. First of all, what's prismatic? I have no idea, so I had to look it up, and I went over here, and I found some great pictures of prisms, and so with that, um, after I kind of learned what it was, I did this. All right, let's go do this. Uh, let's go ahead and open up his folder. I'll pause it a little bit, because it takes a little while for me to open it. All right. Chris, is, this is... Actually, a really well executed picture. I like the crispness, the sharpness to it. Um, all right. In order to do what we were talking about doing, uh, first, let's go ahead and create a layer of light for the light to come into the stone. And I'm going to do that by, I know there's a way to do it up here, but I'm, I've been using the shortcut so long. The only way I know how to do it is we're going to create a new layer called Control, Shift, and N, and that's a new layer. And I think you can create that up here uh, in layer. Pretty sure about that. And I'm going to just call it uh, Beam, B-A-M. You don't have to name it, but it just makes it easier later on when you're looking for it. Okay, and let's go ahead and zoom in nice and close. And we're going to – it's a little pixelated because I took his picture off Facebook. But let's go ahead, and I'm going to use the poly lasso, and I'm going to get a nice tight beam to come over here. And the only reason I'm using the poly lasso, lasso instead of the uh, brush is because I can't cut it straight. But the poly gives me nice, straight, clean lines. All right, and let's go ahead and... Just a couple of different ways we can do this. We can either use the brush or I'm going to do Shift F5 the quick way. And I'm just going to fill it in with white like that. It's not right like I like it. So what I'm going to, if you, it's hard to see, but these, it's, it's these little lines in here. So let's right click on here and refine the edges. And we're going to smooth this out just a little bit. And I'm going to give it. And I'm going to take it up to 19, push OK, and let's shift F5 again, and it's going to ask us what color we want to use. Let's tell it we want to use white, and click OK, and it should be a little bit smoother now. Okay, let's Control D and see how if it looks smooth. Eh, it's smooth enough. Okay, and now I'm going to create another layer. And control shift in and we're gonna call this over spill or something like that. The only reason I'm putting these on different layers because we're gonna do a little bit different thing to each layer. And um, again we're gonna go with the poly, poly lasso, lasso, lasso. And I'm gonna start right here in the middle. And Go right here, drag this down to here, right, and come over to here. All right, now instead of using um, the Shift F5 to fill it, I'm going to use a uh, brush, this brush right here. Put it on about 25% opacity, Move 25, 26, same thing. And I'm going to put, make sure this is white right here is and I'm gonna just put a nice little white beam in there white village 
go over it a couple of times, make sure I don't miss any spaces, but I'm just continuously holding down the left click. Now I'm going to control D, which is deselecting that, and I'm going to create another layer over here, control shift N, and I'm going to call it over overflow. Maybe. Let's see. Did I do something wrong? Control shift. Control shift N. Oh, okay. It's just, let's see. Over overflow. Just so I can identify it later. Uh, identify it later. And again, we're going with the poly, because the poly treats us right. And I'm going to put this up here. Nice spillage. Big spillage. And a little bit down. Maybe a little bit over her fingers. Do it the way you want to do it, but this is the way I'm doing it. And again, we're going with the last two. And it's at 25% now. Um, 26%. Go down to 18 so I'll trial and error it out what it boils down to. All right, and I'm going to deselect that again. That looks it looks okay. Let's jump back and take a look at it. It looks decent. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but this is how we're going to really freak it out. All right, on the beam, I'm going to click on the beam first, of course, the beam layer, and then I'm going to go to filter, and I'm going to, let's go ahead and sharpen the beam. Let's unsharp mask and give it a little bit more pop. This is already pretty high, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then on the overspill, I'm going to go ahead and filter it and go to blur, and then go to Gaussian blur, and look at that. 2.4 radius, and it, it gives it a little less ugliness. It, it's, it's not as straight anymore, and it looks like it could be real. And then click OK. And that's actually pretty good. And then let's go to over overflow and then go to the filter on that. And I'm going to really blur it out pretty good. Let's see. And it gives it a little bit more. It's a little less like it just gives it a little bit more. more. I don't know the word for it, but I like it. I like the way it looks. That's what it boils down to. Click OK, and the beam for some reason I don't. It's not. It's not. I'm not feeling it. But I'm gonna go down here to the beam, and I think the beam is too sharp, and it it, it doesn't have a real feel to me. So I'm gonna go to Gaussian Blur, take it down. Let's see. Let's give it. A, that's a little bit better. There we go. I like that. I like that right there. Perfect. All right. It feels it feels good to me. Let's go with the overspill layer, and we're gonna give it a little bit more blur because it still kind of sticks out to me, and it shouldn't stick out. I know some people. Oh, you're jacking with it. Leave it alone. Okay, I'll leave it alone. All right, and that's the first layers that we're going with and let's go with the second layer and this is getting kind of long and I'm going to use the poly again but we're going to create a new layer control shift in I'm going to call this rainbow if I didn't if I had a little bit more time I would create separate layers for these rainbow this rainbow effect but I'm going to just create one big layer on it and let's see Let's take a look at our prisms and see where the light is coming from. It's coming off of one surface on this one, I think. So let's go ahead. I'm going to just do it off of one surface, which is that top surface. And I'm going to put the poly down here, put it up here. See how this is gonna work for us. Let's bring it off of this top surface. It's one of the things, like I said, I've never done this before, so it may work, may not work. Let's see what colors we're working with on the polys too. So it looks like red, red to like orange, yellow. 
Alright, so let's take a brush and click down here. Let's go up to red. And again, like I said, I know some of you true Photoshopians may be like, oh, you're not doing it right. But hey, as long as you get the end result, baby, I think we're fine. And it's a nice soft brush. That's why we're getting that decent softness of the edge. And um, I think the next color goes down to like an orange. Let's see. Like a little smaller brush. Oh, great. My computer does that. Sometimes I have no idea why. And like I said, that's nice orange. Nice that straight. And then we're going to yellow. Make this a little bit wider. What what's the next one? I think it's like green. And let's see how it looks. Green. And I in my mind, I'm thinking that this crap. In my mind, I'm thinking that this doesn't have to be just super straight. Mother F. Let's see. See, this is what happens when you get a CS5. And you're like, oh no, you you covering up the model's face, which is the most important. No, it's not. It is important, but that's not what's most important because later on I'm going to do something that will wow and amaze you and your friends. Let's, uh, I'm getting this yellow because I know I've noticed I missed some up here and I don't. You kind of get the gist of what I'm doing, so I'm going to pause this and kind of go fast forward just a little bit. Okay. I filled in my magic my magic rainbow over here and I have my little little thing around it, nice little what I guess is prismatic effect. Now you go, that's ugly. That's not that's not cool. So I'm gonna deselect. And um one way to make this a little bit better, I think, is um on this layer, first of all I'm gonna drop my Gaussian blur on it. I'm pretty sure that Gaussian, Gaussian, I've heard it called a couple of different things by a couple of different people, but I'm going to call it Gaussian. Um, I'm going to put me a Gaussian blur on it, and I'm going to increase it till it looks fairly natural to me. Mm, and that's decent. Decently natural, kind of. All right, and then I'm going to click OK. Like I said, I've never done this before, so this is new to me and you. Now that looks good, except you can't see the model's face, right? So here's what we do for that. We over here we click um, normal, and I'm gonna try overlay and see how that looks. That's that's alright right there. That's that's not bad. Let's see how the other ones look. It may be something else that we can find that we like. And as I'm flipping through these, if you see something that you like, I mean, you guys can do this too. Um, you can do this at home easily, and I'm just going down through the different layer options. Like that overlay is nice, and I like that soft light. That's pretty cool. But what I'm going to do, uh, 
see, my problem is I got to find something that looks natural to me. I just like that's the problem that you you have is that you got to find something that looks nice to you. First of all, I think this opacity is way too high, so let's drop this opacity a little bit, and it may just help the whole thing overall, where we really won't have to do too much to it. See, I kind of like it. Okay, I got a little idea. I'm going to try something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a layer mask on my rainbow here. And all you have to do is click here, and it creates a mask, and then you can take your brush. Let's see, it's at 100% now. And I'm going to take it down to 50%. And what this does, it's almost like a tool, but it's just not as permanent. That's the best way I can explain it. Take me a nice soft brush. And when I say soft, that just means over here, the hardness. If it's hard, it has like a nice line to it. But if it's soft, there's, it's, it's real, it gives almost like a gradient feel to it when you do stuff to it. Now watch this. And like, okay, Chris, if she had a neck, this would look better. All right. And I'm going to give it a little bit more right here so you can see her eyes and stuff. And I'm going to just take it completely off the background here because if it was a prism effect, it would be coming off the diamond and it wouldn't be hitting the background where where the shadow is. So let's do that. Bootleg CS again. Let's see. And the cool thing about this is, like I said, since I'm using a um, since I'm using a mask, I can mess up or and I can just re-put that back in by uh, switching to the other brush and letting it letting it come on through. Let's give it a little bit more down here. Because it's hitting this big collar she has on. It's nice, by the way. Yeah, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. This is decent. And let's open this brush up a little bit more. And I'm going to take it off her, off this background here a little bit more. It's still kind of strong back there, but it's giving, I think it's giving the effect that you want. And it's still strong right back here, so we're going to take some of it off. Same thing over here. So it'll be a little bit less distracting. And down here, let's give it a little bit more distractiveness. Almost looks like the lights in uh, Alaska. And we're going to take it off a little bit off the side over here again. And just to give you a little bit something extra on it, uh, I'm going to go to Adjustments, go to Hue Saturation. And we're going to boost the color on it just a little bit. And that should give it a little something special. Oh, anyway, again, this has been You Suck Your Photography. I'm going to keep playing with this just a little bit more. It's Chris Porter with You Suck Your Photography. And um, maybe you could put some of the little rainbow in the eyes. Who knows? You can go go hog wild with it, but it gives you a basis. Gives you a basis to start with. Hope you liked it. If you do go to you suck your photography. Sign up for my little videos. Thanks a lot. Peace.